Just uh, thought of something as you were talking about the senses, uh, just like gestalt. Yeah, McGurgis like to use that term, gestalt. Yeah, it's a German word. I yeah, love so... gestalt. I yeah. think it's a wonderful, I mean, we don't have time, but there's a lot of richness there. I'm so glad you brought that up. Well, you we can go for it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can go for one more Bergson announcement. Yeah. Okay. But you know this. You know the. You know the famous phrase like, well, what's the famous phrase? No. Yeah. The, the whole is more than some of the. You know. Of parts. And, yeah. and also <laughs> that. And and there's that thing that I, I used to tell against reductionism. Like you cannot. You cannot split the whole into parts. But then I always felt like the sentence needed kind of a, a punchline to kind of make it work because it's like. Let me do another example. Yes, I can. I just did it. <laughs> That's it, right? Yeah, right. All right. I just uh, dropped the glass. So with Bergson, I understood how the sentence should end. You cannot split the whole into parts without the whole changing in nature, right? I was so, I was having that thought as you were saying it. It's so true. Because yes. if I drop the glass, it's not the glass anymore. Exactly. It's so parts. yes, you can you can vivisect a dog like Claude Bernard would do, you can study life by killing it. You can, but it's not life anymore, right? You can yeah, study the mind by the doing this. You can take a football and spit it into, but it's not a football anymore. And well, that's what came to mind with the word gestalt because there's the whole and then we don't want to, um, yeah, pack it into parts, but, and yet we do, and maybe we need to. There's another quote from Bergson that says, and, and, and yet you must learn to sew it back or something like this, because we end up having to cut things. I, at some point we need to cut the recording of these, or at some point we need to move on to the next thing. I cut onion to cook. And um, maybe it's kind of the sewing back of our of our ideas, like this patchwork. We, we, are, we are told how to be great cutters as scientists and experimentalists in particular. But then nobody needs knows how to stitch things back together. And then comes, you mentioned a moment ago, Evie, Ian McGilchrist. So he's the ultimate stitcher, you know, it's like, and then, and then you can see the whole thing, the whole thing together. It's kind of an operation on the whole. I always think of life almost that, you know, we're always trying to define what is life and in cognition, you know, what's, when is a machine going to be conscious and all of this. And you almost can define it by if you, can take it into parts. And if it really is mechanical and you can put it back together, it's probably not alive, right? Because, I mean, of course we can break things and we can sort of then put them back together in some way if we have the right tools and stuff, but you can't really do that with a human body. But even more, I think of Gestalt as almost like, uh, to go back to an activism, I was just at this little kind of gathering with Alvin Noe and Evan Thompson, who's been coming up here. and. Alvin Noah's like latest book, he's talking about style and there's all kinds of things to go into, but you almost can think of like a person or a personality or a style in this kind of process or gestalt or pattern. And you can't really take that away into parts, but you could maybe look at how it got to be like that or, or look at how those regularities are similar to other regularities. So yeah, for me, again, it's this not confusing trying to understand something with the process that is that, that you can't ever actually take into parts. You can, we could build models and that goes back to the mechanistic and all of these kinds of things, but that isn't the process. And we confuse that so often in science and everyday life now, as you know, we were talking about with the universities and the way they're run now. Um, totally. Totally. Yeah. It's, and it's hurting us. <laughs> It is. It's hurting our our future generations as well. I see my sons turning to a computer scientist. Yeah, he's he's really good with his math. He's very good with his science, and then he chose to to do computer science instead of something else. You know, yeah, it turned our kids into a machine. Really, yeah. We have a proprioceptive problem at the civilizational level, right? Yeah. Like Terence yeah. McKenna would say. If we if we if we could feel what we're doing to ourselves and to the world, we would stop immediately. Mm -hmm. It's like, um, but we don't. I think that's really important yeah. what you both just said because it's it sounds simple, but it's really a complex thing that we've we've forgotten how to be okay with the pattern and the gestalt and the process, which is life. 
And instead, we were so used to this mechanic thing, whether it's the university or whether it's what we're going to study or whether it's just how we sit alone in a room. We now need that mechanistic feeling. Um, and that's just habit. That's just that we've 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 prioritized those kind of models and it's it's bled into everything. And it's now a habit that we that's what we know and that's where we feel safe. And um, that's really missing out yes. on so much and it is. Uh, yeah and, and we know it right we feel it i think 